Renaissance means rebirth. A 16th century Italian writer used the term rebirth considering the art of Giotto as a new start. Beyond that, just what it meant and when it started is hard to determine. Standard interpretations look to polymaths, earlier called Renaissance men, like Leonardo da Vinci and Michelangelo, both Italian artists active in the 15th and 16th centuries. Was humanism required? The movement to secular pursuits in arts? Was art required? 14th century Florentine poet Petrarch emphasized the importance of rediscovering classical antiquity. He discovered letters of Cicero. Women writers included Christine de Pisan and Marguerite de Navarre, Renaissance women. What about science? Scientists included Copernicus, Galileo, and Kepler. Then Gutenberg's movable type and a printing press. Still, art and architecture were front and center and will be the focus. Let's start with Leonardo. Seemingly interested in all things from inventing new painting techniques to analyzing woodpecker tongues. First, the Mona Lisa, that small, most famous painting, basically in its own room in the Louvre, with wall-to-wall -wall people. But turn around and see Leonardo masterpieces nobody seems much interested in. Leonardo's notebooks show his wide-ranging interest from Vitruvian man to dissections and any number of engineering marvels. Unfortunately, they were unpublished and now a curiosity. Vast Florentine wealth was turned into artistic masterpieces. Michelangelo completed his 17-foot David in 1504 the first colossal marble statue after antiquity. Donatello had his version of David, the first freestanding bronze nude since antiquity, completed about a half century before Michelangelo. More masterpieces are in the Uffizi Gallery, built in the mid-16th century, home of the largest collection of Renaissance art in the world. Start with Botticelli's Birth of Venus and Primavera, then Caravaggio's Medusa, Titian's Venus of Urbino, plus more by Leonardo, Giotto, Michelangelo, Raphael, and Ferrecchio. Then take a coffee break, arguably a Renaissance invention from Ethiopia. The most famous architectural feature in Florence is the Duomo with the Brunelleschi Dome built in the mid-15th century, bigger than Rome's Pantheon. Equally impressive is Giotto's bell tower in the Duomo's Plaza, started in 1334. Santa Croce, Holy Cross, is a Franciscan church, started before 1300, founded by St. Francis according to legend. Inside, Monuments by Renaissance greats include Donatello, Giotto, Vasari, plus burials for Galileo, Michelangelo, and Machiavelli. Other can't miss sites include the Ponte Vecchio, the Ghiberti doors to the baptistry, and the Medici chapels partially designed by Michelangelo. St. Peter's is a giant church but much of the Vatican seemed quite secular. The big names in Renaissance art traveled to Rome. Arguably the most famous Vatican sculpture was Michelangelo's Pietà. St. Peter's Basilica is a Renaissance marvel started in 1506. Architects included Michelangelo and Bernini among a large group over 120 years. The interior is vast, the largest church in the world. Pope Julius II founded the Vatican Museum early in the 16th century. The most impressive site is the Sistine Chapel, 
with the great Michelangelo frescoes. When touring, the chapel is filled with people, and every 90 seconds or so, a club pounds the ground and a booming voice shouts, Silencio! That lasts about 20 seconds and the roar starts again. The art galleries include paintings by Leonardo, Raphael, Giotto, Titian, and Caravaggio. The most important sculptures are, the, uh, are from the ancient world, including Apollo Belvedere, Augustus, and, and Laocoon. Venice has a distinctive location and cultural heritage different from the rest of Italy. Architecture of note includes St. Mark's Basilica, St. Mark's Square, and the Doge's Palace. Artists attracted to Venice include Giorgione, Titian, Tintoretto, and Bellini. King Francis I invited Leonardo to France in 1516, who arrived with three paintings now in the Louvre. Peter Paul Rubens was invited to France by Queen Marie de Medici. Catherine de Medici built the Tuileries Palace. Several chateaus and gardens were also built during the Renaissance period. This was roughly Belgium and the Netherlands. Then, the most important were the Habsburg Netherlands, including the Dutch Republic. Skilled merchants were influenced by Italy largely because of trade through Bruges. Bruges became rich through textiles and trade, using their wealth for art, architecture, and culture. Dutch painters included Peter Bruegel, Elder and Younger, and Hieronymus Bosch. Rubens was a skilled Flemish artist, while Rembrandt was the most famous Dutch Golden Age painter, mid-17th century, a bit late for the Renaissance, but Rembrandt. We'll assume the Renaissance starts with Tudor England. Henry VIII was the most famous and infamous of the lot. I have to include Hans Holbein's paintings of Henry as the basic Renaissance sociopath. He seems to fit all the criteria listed by psychologists, with perhaps most of those of a psychopath. Picture Henry in the royal barge on his golden throne, rowed down the Thames with the vast orchestra playing Handel's royal fireworks in the following barges. Elizabeth I was a survivor then the long-serving queen avoiding breaches with the various factions, many of which wanted to kill her. This became the era of English drama with the plays of Marlowe and Shakespeare. Enough on the Renaissance, the wonders of ruthless rich folk. The Middle Ages included a stream of technical improvements, including many related to farming and trade. A thousand years of technical progress next time on food history and mystery.